too, because it looks a certain way in other people. It's true. You like it, but you also know, if anyone were to come to my house, you're going to look at my car, I'm going to peek in the window of my car, I'm going to come to work, they're going to see my desk a certain way, and I want them to see it a certain way. They're going to see my house a certain way. They're going to look at me and what I wear a certain way. Everything you have you like, but it's also determined a little bit by rivalry. By the effect and the impression it's going to have on other people. It's true. And that's the teacher's point. Inherently, people are driven by envy, by mutual rivalry. Their focus is on others, and the standard is set by others. How do I measure up? How do I get into the front seat? Now, he gets a little sidetracked here in verse 5 um, and verse 6. So he's going to get slightly sidetracked, but I want you to keep that rivalry thing in your mind. So he gets a little sidetracked, but, but this, this isn't his point. He'll come back to his point, uh, but he says, okay, flaw, verse 5. So he says, for fools fold their hands and ruin themselves, but are one handful of tranquility than two handfuls of toil and chasing after the wind. If that looks random, it is a little bit random. There's a reason he said that he's quoting some Proverbs, um, some popular saying during his day, and there's a reason for it, though, because he gets a little bit sidetracked. I'm not convinced that the teacher doesn't have a little bit of ADD because he's done this a few times where he gets sidetracked, he thinks a little bit too far, he's like, goes down these rapid trails. So, so he says, pause here, you hear this, everything is driven by rivalry, right? Everything is driven a little bit by wanting to at least be in the same seat or be in the front seat with everybody else. Um, it, it, everything we have is determined a little bit by other people and what they think. Uh, and he, so he says, now, you've heard that, and the reaction could be, your reaction could be, um, I guess I won't, I just won't try that. Right? You know what? If everything is determined by rivalry with other people, I'm just not going to try. I'm not going to do anything that's going to be, you know, considered, oh, you're, you're a rival, but that's why you have this. You know, and, and so a reaction might be, I just won't try. It's not worth it. Any effort in your life has, um, no enemy or rivalry here. That's the temptation. That's the response that we, some of us might think. I'll just stop doing all of it then. And he's saying, no, that shouldn't be the reaction. You heard this truth. Your reaction might be, I'm just not going to do any of it, so no one can say that I'm, I'm a rival of anybody. He says, no, okay, don't, no, don't let that be your reaction because to, to, this, to this fact. Um, don't let it be, okay, I just won't do anything or achieve anything pursue anything because that's driven by sin. That's not the point. Um, verse 5, he says, you're a fool. If that's a reaction, like, well, all this achievement is driven by sin, so I'm just not even going to try to achieve. He says, no, that would make you a fool. Fools fold their hands and then ruin themselves. That would make you, that makes you a fool if, if you're ruining yourself. The right reaction when you hear most of this stuff is driven by a sinful competition with other people, the right reaction for six is to be content. Better one handful with tranquility than two handfuls of toil and you're chasing after the wind. And so he borrows a proverb to illustrate this. Just be content. So he, he says, cup your hand and fill it as full as possible. That's plenty. That's, that's plenty. Remember when you were a kid and you didn't know how much food to take at dinner? And your mom and dad always complain, I think that's enough, I think that's plenty, but you're thinking, no, my I'm very hungry, right? And so you, you fill it up and they're mad because you wasted all that food. So this is, this is kind of that. Fill up your hand to look at it, that's enough. You've got, you've got enough there, be content with that. You can still function with your other hand and do stuff, right, because you have enough. Fill up both hands, and you're greedy, and now you have too much. You've got a problem. No more hands. You can't do anything else because you've, you're right. Your eyes are bigger than your stomach. You've got too much. And the, so the, the point is, because he gets sidetracked, because he doesn't want people to think, oh, I'm just not going to try at all. No, just be content. Be content with what you have. Don't worry about what other people have. Be content with what you have. Pursue contentment. Be motivated by God and contentment. Not, not the rivalry, not the envy, no one to stop. No one to say, you know what? You can pass me the left lane all you want. I'm going to speed limit. I'm content. I'm going to get there. I'm fine. Um, don't be motivated by that rivalry or envy, that passion and pleasure that your sin nature wants. Now, the key to this, B, 
being content is going to be God teaching us to say no. So without relation with God, it's going to be very hard to be satisfied with the one hand. Right? And so we've got to partner with God, and if, if we struggle with wanting to dip that second hand in there and not be content and want what everybody else has, or at least get comparable to it, we've got to talk to God with that, because it's God's grace that teaches us to say no. Right? But he's saying, don't just stop trying. You, you're a fool, and I'll tell you that. You're a fool. Don't hold your hands and be like, oh, I'm not going to sin at all. No, get that, you're just done. What you need to do is to be content. Right? Good advice. Not the point of what he's saying here. It gets a little bit sidetracked. So good advice. That's free information for this morning. Tuck it away um, and, and use it on later on. Pursue godly contentment. Back to his point. With the full passage. So he gets sidetracked, gave some free advice. But now he returns to his focus with verse 7. It's almost like he's telling himself to come back to it. Okay, no, no. Again, what I was saying was, uh, I saw something meaningless under the sun. So... Back to it, he says, Everybody, godless and sinful people, even you, um, when you were without God, still at times because you're still bad at saying no, you got to say it's one godliness, you still struggle with sin. Everyone is motivated by an inherent envy, a rivalry, a hatred for each other. And it's better to be content, better to be motivated by a godly contentment. But here's what he says, but that's not what I see. It's better to be content. We would all agree it's better to be content. But that's not what I see. When I look out, I don't see contentment. Here's what I see. And he gives an example that's meant to represent people uh, in general. It sounds really specific in verse 8. It sounds really specific. But what he's saying is, let me give you an example. Here's what I see in the world. I should see contentment, but do I? No, I don't. Here's what every human is like, verse 8. There is a man. There's a man all alone. He had neither son nor brother, and there was no end to his toil. Yet his eyes weren't content with his wealth. For whom am I toiling, he asked, and why am I depriving myself of enjoyment? This too is meaningless, it is a miserable business. But he says, everybody's driven by rivalry, we should be content. Now, when I look at people in general, what do I see? Do I see contentment? No, I see this man in everybody. I see this man in every single person I look at. The, the inherent envy, the inherent rivalry inside us because of sin makes us alone. It makes us lonely. People are driven to achieve because of other people. People are driven to find more because of this rivalry. People are driven to get what they think they need because of this envy. But ultimately, that same motivation inherited in people because of the rivalry drives them away from each other. That same motivation to keep up with each other, to, be, be, to achieve.